Well, first of all, I'm really sorry not to be with you at the United Kingdom Home Care Association Conference. Uh, I had wanted to be there, I'd committed to being there, but unfortunately health questions in Parliament are taking place uh, today, which made it impossible. Uh, I hope you have a really uh, successful uh, conference. And I also just wanted to start by thanking all of you uh, for the work that you do. There's a lot of brilliant care out there uh, and a lot of very committed people, care workers and those in charge of organisations providing care. And I suspect that our vision is exactly the same. We're all, I'm sure, trying to provide the best possible uh, highest standard of care for people uh, in their own homes. Now, I think it's also important to start by being completely candid about the uh, financial situation that we all face. I mean, this government has had to confront a, a situation with public finances where, as a government, we were spending over £150 billion a year more than we were bringing in in taxes. Uh, and even after a lot of very tough uh, work over the last three years, uh, that figure is still £120 billion more each year than we're bringing in in taxes. So inevitably the financial position is incredibly tough uh, and it's been tough for local authorities and that inevitably has its impact on providers. So I recognise uh, the tough times uh, that you are experiencing completely. Uh, but I think uh, given those financial circumstances and the fact that over the years to come uh, the pressures on our system are simply going to grow because of more people living for many years with uh, long-term chronic uh, conditions. We just have to find better ways of us using the money that's available to us to ensure that we look after those people who rely on uh, all of us uh, to get uh, very good care. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to shift resources into uh, pooling uh, the money that's available between health and social care uh, to ensure that we integrate care much more effectively, making better use of resources and hopefully then freeing up money to uh, provide for high quality home care and so on. Uh, by 2015-16 we're creating a £3.8 billion, what we call transformation fund. Now the idea is that uh, by pooling the resources of the NHS and uh, local authorities, we can use the money more effectively. We will require every local area to come up with their plans about how they will pool the resource and make the best possible use of it. We're leading the way uh, with some pioneers in integrated care around uh, the country to demonstrate how you can make better use of the resources available and achieve better results for people, keeping people out of hospital, keeping better in, uh, people in better health and well-being in their own homes rather than crises occurring constantly, the sort of revolving door that so many people get into, which is dreadful for them and incredibly costly to the system. And I think if we can go down this route, then everyone can benefit and home care can be sustainable uh, as the rest of the system uh, needs to be. But it's not just about money. Uh, it's also about the way in which we commission home care and also the responsibility of providers to ensure that we get great home care. Let me deal first of all uh, with commissioning. Now I launched a challenge on home care earlier this year because I wanted innovation, new ideas about how we can ensure that we use the money to best effect. And I'm conscious that uh, poor commissioning results ultimately in poor care or, and poor use of the resource that's available. If we're simply commissioning for very short periods of time, uh, that's all that the providers can respond to uh, and it's not the best way to uh, get great results for people. So we are working with ADAS and the LGA to come up with uh, commissioning standards that focus on quality and on results for people, improving their well-being, their mobility uh, and ensuring that they can remain independent uh, for longer. Uh, but then uh, we need to see that change from local authorities and we need to be able to challenge them to ensure that they are changing their commissioning uh, approaches to achieve better results for people. So 
we can use the powers that CQC has available to them to hold local authorities to account to ensure that commissioning achieves what we're all after. But there are then also responsibilities on providers. I know that uh, the vast bulk of home care is of a good standard and there is much really excellent uh, care uh, around. And there's a lot of innovation about the way in which we deliver services as well. But we can never be complacent. And I think actually, if we're honest, all of us would agree where, that where there are really serious failures of care, there have to be consequences for that. So we're introducing through the Care Quality Commission fundamental standards that all care providers, public, third sector, private, will have to commit to. And where there are serious failures to meet those standards, then there have to be consequences. What happened, for example, at Winterbourne View it is just so shocking. Uh, it's such a dreadful failure to care for people who are vo very vulnerable. Uh, and the same has happened uh, in a number of other circumstances in care homes uh, and so on. Uh, and so I think there have to be those consequences when there are very serious failures of care. But actually I'm also acutely aware that the way you achieve great care is by inspiring people to do great things. Uh, I was out with a, an amazing care worker going from house to house in West London seeing the work that he was doing, seeing the dedication that he was showing in the way he went about his job. And I know that that is replicated thousands of times around the country. So I want ultimately to work closely with you to achieve the ambition that we're all after, which is achieving great care at a time of very tough financial constraints. Have a great day. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And do please take up the offer to work closely with us to achieve these objectives. Thanks very much indeed.